Hi guys, this is Allison Fryer. Um, I got a request to do this painting, uh, clothes on the line, so I thought that I would show you how to do this today and hopefully we can get it done in a few little lessons. And so I'll put this down and then we'll start a new, we'll start a brand new canvas, size 11 by 14. That's what that is, 11 by 14, and I have my paints ready on my palette, and the sap green, ultramarine blue, titanium white, burnt umber, and cad red, and cad yellow. That's what I'm using today. I try to use very limited paints so I don't have to go out and buy hundreds of different colors. Plus you mix your own, which is a good help. So what you want to do now for that painting is, I'm just going to tape it all around just so that you can have a little border around it if you want to. You don't have to do this, but you can do that, put a border around it, that will give it a nice little, nice little look to your painting. So that's all it takes, is a little bit of tape all around, and around the bottom. Good. And get this done properly for you. Okay. And then we'll do the other side. And then you got your nice little border. Now you can also do an oval border with tape if you wanted to. You can, uh, you know, use your imagination. This is kind of nice. So I'm just going to throw another little bit of tape right here, just so I know where the sky, the horizon is, just to help me put everything in place. You don't have to do all this uh, taping up, but um, I'm just trying to determine where the sky and the water meet. That's your horizon right here. These trees are above the horizon. The tape is... The horizon's right here above the tape, and your trees will be going up over your tape. So make sure you have enough space for your sky and your trees above the horizon. So the, the horizon line's the top of the tape. So looking at that, I'm thinking I might need a little more room so I can come down a little bit. Right, so this is the things you have to adjust to make sure you got things in place before you get started. It's like preparing a meal sometimes, getting on your paints ready and all your ingredients and now we're going to cook them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our brushes and I just have the brushes that I'm going to use are, are just uh, the Bristol brush size 10 this one is and just another smaller one this is probably size 2 or I don't know for sure it's all wore off but you can see the difference in the size hopefully and this is a filbert brush See how round it is on top? These are really nice for flowers and clouds, anything like that. So I'd suggest you get a filbert brush, okay, because these are really nice. And fan brush and liner brush, okay, fan brush and liner brush. And any other brushes that you think you might need. I got these brushes. These are really nice. These are just such a bottom new ones. These are really nice. They're sable or synthetic and they're really nice. They, they bounce back. They're soft, but they bounce back. As long as they bounce back, they're really nice. Okay? So, that's that. Now, let's get cooking. So, what we'll do first is we'll do the sky. And be, even though we have trees and everything here, we're going to do our background first. So, let's get out our Bristol brush. I like working with Bristol brush. You certainly can use a sable if you want. Okay? Uh, everything I say is not written in stone, you know, just um, when you get more experience, you will pick your own brushes and make your own decisions. I'm making your decisions for you right now, but you will eventually make your own decisions and do your own paintings. And thank you very much for sending me your paintings. They're so beautiful. You're doing a great job. So I'm just putting blue, ultramarine blue and white, titanium white together with a little bit of red just to... I don't know. Now look, see I had too much red. This, see? That happens to the best of us. So I'm just going to move to the side here. I add a little bit of that color that I made too red. I might add a little tiny bit of burnt umber just to 
grayed up a little bit. Sky's got a grayish, bluish, purplish color sometimes. So just to have some fun, let's just get that on there. Back and forth, long strokes. I know I, I do long strokes and some people do, like I said, crisscross strokes. That's up to how you're comfortable with it. Okay, so anyway, I'm just mixing the paints and I'm going back and forth, long strokes. And you might say, you mixed up a little batch and then when you go back to mix it again, it may not come out the same color. Well, that's fine because it'll all mix together. We're working wet on wet and um, skies have all different colors and values and hues to them. So, you know, it's nice to have actually little different colors here and there. So don't worry about that too much. If you want to make sure that your color is still the same, if you you can also go and buy pre-mixed paints, and that way then you'll already have a, a bottle of pre-mixed paint. You won't have to worry about that. You won't have to worry about um, going back and getting more color, and then the color is different. So you can do that too. But I like mixing my own colors because it gives me lots of values and lots of changes in the color. See how it changed up a bit down there. So as I come down, I'm going to put more white down here. Okay. Even though the trees are going there, I just still want to tell you that it gets lighter as you go down. And it's darker at the top. Your sky is, starts darker at the top and gets lighter as they come down. That kind of looks almost the same, but that's okay because I'm putting my trees here, but I just wanted to explain it to you. So there we go. Now you have a pretty little sky. You can also um, have it a little bit darker in the corner. You can always go, as long as the paint is wet, you can always go back and make adjustments. If the paint dries up on you, then you can, it's harder to do that because you got to cover. It'll just cover up everything you're doing. But see, I'm, I can blend that in there, and it'll blend. It'll get a little darker, but it'll all blend together nicely. See? Because it's all wet. You're working wet on wet, wet on wet, wet paint on wet paint, and that is used for blending. Okay. Whenever, say, now you want to put. We'll put trees on there, that's okay to be wet on wet, that's fine. But if you're going to put, a, say, a lighthouse or something there, then your paint in the background should be dry so you can get your lighthouse on over the paint. So the next step will be the trees. So we'll take the same brush and we'll do some trees. And all you have to do is dip into some green, some green. And because they're going to be the, the further away, the distant trees, we'll add a little tiny bit of blue to them. A little bit of blue. And then we'll add a little bit of white. Now, I like to experiment with colors just to see what they're going to be like. And so, like I say, everything's not written in stone. You, you can decide what color greens you want and everything. So let's just throw on some light green because they're in the background. Just tap, 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 There we go. Tap, 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 tap. And as you come up, um, they talk about the negative space around your subject. So what we're saying is, look at the shape of the trees on top. You don't want them going straight across. You want to have some shape, so make more interest to your painting. Tap, 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 up. Tap, 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 down. Tap, 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 up. Tap, 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 down. <laughs> Maybe you'll get a laugh out of that. Okay, so there we go, some background trees. And they're the uh, far away distant trees, okay? We'll add some darker trees to that just to make it look like there's some trees coming forward. So what we're going to do is I am going to try um, this brush again. We can use the same brush or you can get a smaller brush. It's up to you. Experiment with different brushes. I would suggest that you experiment with lots of different brushes and have some fun. See what works best for you. Okay. So now we're going to go a little darker. So we're going to take the sap green and put it like that. And then just tap on some sap green trees. And go in front of the ones that you just made and remember to have up, 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 down. There we go. And that will give you that will give you the darker trees in the front. See? There we go. So be aware, be aware of the shape of your trees. Alright? Don't just tap and go right straight across. 
Be aware of your trees. Up, 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 down. Just by tapping. Look, I didn't have to do anything. It was a tree shape there. See? Let your brush do it all. And this is a nice brush for that. This is the Bristol brush, size 10. Well, you can, like I said, experiment with different brushes. That's what painting's all about. Have fun, experiment. Always have fun and experiment with your brushes. And your colors. Experiment with your colors. Find out uh, what is the complementary of each color. I'll mention them here as I go along. Complementary of red is green. And we'll just continue on. I don't want to... I don't want to get lost in what I'm doing here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that tape off. So if you're happy with your background trees, then you can take your tape off. So your sky and your background trees and your more forward trees. All in a matter of five, ten minutes. See, it doesn't take very long to do a painting. Now you can practice your uh, tons of skies. You can practice tons of trees. I'm always practicing, constantly practicing. I just even just fooling around. I mean, that looks that doesn't look good, but it's always because I'm just I just want to see how my brushes, you know, what I can do with my different brushes and all that stuff. So, I mean, I can show you a ton of things where I'm always practicing and always trying different things with my brushes. It's fun, and I know you got to have a lot of time for it. So, don't feel guilty if you can't if you don't have the time. You will have time later. So, if you're busy working or whatever you're doing. You know, just take the time when you get a chance and, and practice some different things with, with painting if you love it that much. So the next thing you're going to do is take a smaller brush. It's just a smaller brush. And I'm going to take any color that you want, any color that you desire. Let's take some blue. And we're just going to decide where we want. So we got some trees done and we got some sky. We're going to put some clouds in after. So we're going to decide where I want my water to end and my grass to begin. So what I'm going to do to make that easy for me is I'm going to draw a kind of a line here to give me some grass. A little wiggly line there. That can always change that. Good. Now all you have to do is get your fan brush. So get your fan brush out and make sure you put in water. Tap it off in your tissue. Make it damp. Try to make your brush stamp all the time. It'll help the paints move and it'll help, uh, it'll help the paints move. And I'm going to double load my brush, which means I'm putting paint on one side and paint on the other side. And I'm going to mix some white in with it in order to brighten it up. I don't want my water to be too dark. So it's just going to be plain water. So I'll just put that underneath here, underneath here, and underneath here we go. So we can put some up here, and the same with the water. So we'll start with some water, a little lighter on top. There we go. And as we come down, we get a little darker. So, isn't it funny, the skies start darker on the top and lighter as you come down but the water and the land seems to uh, start lighter at the top and get darker as you come down hmm. but you can do whatever way you want to there's there's rules and there's no rules there's your rules and there's rules rules that that will help you in your paintings like where to place your composition how to place your composition that uh, your subject should go uh, in the rule of thirds should all, uh, go to the right or the left, your main subject, you know. But if you want something in the middle of your painting, go for it, you know. Composition is important. You look at other people's paintings and you'll see, you know, study other people's paintings who've got a lot of experience and see how they lay out their paint. Depending on what you're interested in, if you're interested in landscapes, look at landscape paintings and see how they laid out their landscapes, their subjects and their and where they have the, the light source and, and their focal point. See where your eye goes to first and that's your focal point. So if they have a spot with all kinds of light shining on a little house or a tree or something, then that's your focal point. You want to bring you want to bring attention to that area. 
and you know, the way to do that is to get lots of light in that area or make it stand out on its own somehow. It's a lot to learn. It's not a, a very, you know, takes a lot of study, but it's fun. This, you know, it's fun to get started. You know, if you want to start bring, exhibiting your paintings and you want to start selling them and you need, you really want to learn all the basics and, and all the everything that you do to make a really good painting. Okay? So these are good start. These paintings here are a good start to get you started and get you at least to know how to use a fan brush and how to, to make some water and some trees and skies and things like that. A few little things that I put in here. Okay, but study, study. If you want to make a career out of art, you have a lot of study, a lot of work. Okay, so we're getting to the bottom of the water. I'm just darken it up a small bit. You know, you can have different. Now, my paint is starting to dry a little bit. It seems to be uh, getting, maybe it's warm here. And I'm just going to spray that to keep it from. From uh, I'm just gonna spray, 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 spray. There we go. A little mist down there, just so it'll move for you. Okay. You don't have to do that, but if it's starting to dry up on you and you feel that your brush won't move the paint, that's a good thing to do. So there we go. We get some water on there. You can do all kinds of stuff with this water. You can put some darker lines in there, some white lines. We'll we'll add a few more things now after we get this done. So I'm gonna do the water and I'm gonna do a bit of grass and then we're going I'm going to go and let you practice and get your painting ready. And you can send it to me when you get it done if you like. So I can look at it and see your version of the painting. Okay, I like to see your version. I don't critique. Cri <laughs> I can't even say the word. You know, I if I I will make suggestions if I think you know it'll improve or to help you. But um, otherwise, I love looking at your paintings. You do a great job. Okay, so we'll just get that water in there, and we will just add a few little darks here and there, just to give it some dimension. Because it seems like it's just one flat one flat color and we don't we want to add some interest okay just add a little bit of dark lines I had to wet my brush a little bit there I'm finding my paint was a bit dry so if you're having a hard time with your paint and you're trying to put it on and the paint won't move and stick it feels sticky almost it could be because your house is warm and uh, warm temperatures because this paint uh, it really dries fast I probably paint dries fast but sometimes it don't you know sometimes you, you'll Work, work, work. See how I added the water and now it's running? That's fine. No big deal. Alright, so I'm just adding a little bit more color. There we go. I'm just dipping into my darker color and just throwing in some, some of these darker colors. There we go. So I'm just going to leave that for now. And then what I'm going to do next, one more thing to do before we go and I'll do another, I'll get the other video, video ready. Is, uh, let's put some grass at the bottom. Some grass. Okay, here we go. So all you need is green. Take the big brush used for your sky. Take some green paint. Alright, and add a little bit of your complementary color red to it. Give it a more earthy look. See I added a bit too much. Okay, so now I'm going to move over here because that was way too much in my opinion. So I'm going to add a little more and probably a little tiny bit of blue because I want the grass to be nice and dark. I'm just going to start down here in the bottom and that gives a nice earthy color. Good. Tap, tap, tap away. Tap, 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 tap. Good. Just tap on that grass. This is just your underpainting, so don't worry about it being... We want it nice and dark, so, so make sure it is nice and dark, because we're going to do all the highlights on top of this, okay? So just keep adding green. Don't, no need to add any more red or blue. I'm just going to keep adding green now. If this brush is too big, just go back and get another brush, a smaller brush, okay? So this is just your underpainting for your grass. 
And like I said, I'm going to let you go so I can do get ready for the next video so I can show you some more. So get the clothes on the line. It's a lovely day out for it. The sun is shining. Get those clothes on the line. Get the nice fresh air going into your clothes. Okay, so just keep this dark green here. And then when we come back, I will lighten up the grass and we'll do other things with this painting. And then I'll see you in lesson two, clothes on the line. Happy painting!